I, uh, I, I really didn't think that I would be playing this game again. However, of course, this video is sponsored by LD Player, and so here we are. Hi. Welcome back to another Figure Fantasy video. My name is Lace, and today we're going to do kind of like a second impressions of Figure Fantasy. And so if you guys have not checked out my first impressions, I certainly have that uploaded on my channel. And so you guys can just go over and look for it. But otherwise, this time I've actually played through quite a fair bit of the game and I've gotten quite a good feel of what's going on. However, I am at the start screen because I do need to warn you guys who are about to play this game. And what I do want to warn you about is that there is a select region button down here and for me when I installed it despite being in Australia I was automatically fixed to the Americas region. Alright aside from that let's hop into the game let's see what exactly is different and let's have a look at all of the different game modes that I've unlocked as well as the the crazy crazy mess everywhere. And so the first thing that I do want to show you guys is this guy over here like look at all those floating messages very very reminiscent of the Nico Nico Daga. There is one word that I really would want to describe all of this and that is um it's very very chaotic. Since launching there is a lot to do, there are the pre-registration rewards 650k, that's not bad at all. And this time I've actually unlocked a whole bunch of different game modes and there's there's a lot going on. Like that's that's what I mean by chaotic, right? Like I am presented with two, four, six, eight, nine tabs of scrolly stuff the moment that I log into the game. And then when I click out of it, there's just even more like there's just exclamation marks everywhere, there's red dots everywhere. I'm like, oh man, this this stuff is crazy. And there's even a drop down down for another story down here. And so let me just show you where I got up to. So let me go into the battle and the story at 316. So originally I wanted to make this video after I've gotten up to 324 because at 324 we get the uh, the 10 pulls from 200 test draws. So if you guys have been playing like either the Revived Witch or the Epic 7 or like the Counter side, this will be a very, very familiar system to you. And it's that you're able to pick your 10 roll from a total of 200. So I suspect it's gonna be like 20 times. However, uh, unfortunately, I got roadblocked really, really hard. Like I was actually progressing really, really fast. And then at 316, everything just everything just got really, really hard. And so again, if you guys have not checked out my first impressions, I highly would recommend that video before coming to this one, especially because this is a second impressions video and we'll be looking at all of the different changes as well as like assuming knowledge that you know what's going on here. All right, and so to kick things off, this is your pre-combat menu where you're deploying your figures to be like in formation to fight the other enemies. I guess because it's pretty clear that they're not all figures uh, we got some pretty sus ones in here anyway so again I have played this game a little bit more extensively so you can see that there are a whole bunch of arrows coming out over here and so this is pretty cool because it's it's very much like oh if you want your supports to be supporting some characters they have to be in the immediate vicinity and then on top of that you can actually stack some of the effects so you can see two of these arrows are going into this level 20 character up here other than that I guess I've taken notice of some of the archetypes so for example you got like your defenders or your tanks over here you've got the supports with the healing hearts and then you've got like the backliners as well as the frontliners with these guys over here i think all in all i've actually come to quite like the battle process although it is very much like autoing right so the match has started we've gone up and it looks like i'm about to die again um Okay, it's not looking too bad. Anyway, so you, as you can see, my attacker has gone straight up to the front. I've got my defender over here and she is just like right up in their face. And I've got the backliner just doing the damage, the AOE damage as well as the range damage. And so as you can see, the battle duration was only 14 seconds. To be honest, I actually really like this style of game, although I'm not like 100% into the figures themselves. Like again, I see all of this. I, I just think it's so messy. It doesn't really feel very clean and I'm not really a massive fan of that right however as for like the gameplay itself the fact that it's like an afk idol game I, th again this is my first time actually playing an idol game i've actually come to really enjoy it despite uh, a lot of the different shortcomings let's put it that way so again you just saw like the battle so uh let me just go back to the battle screen i i just think that there there is a lot of tactics there is a lot of potential in this one over here like yes it looks like we have some element systems and so therefore it does sound like we're gonna be building mono teams but at the end of the day this is just like it's a very very tactics and strategy based game like your positioning is going to change everything and uh, honestly i want to love this game i don't think i can but I'd, I'd really want to and so if you guys didn't have a chance to watch my last video i i was essentially just not a fan of like the the whole 
the genre, I guess. The gameplay itself is right up my alley, but like the whole, this whole figure thing, I guess, is not really my thing. Like guys, it's not even like a 2D versus 3D thing. Like I like a lot of 3D anime games, right? I really like Genshin. It's just this whole like plasticky doll kind of thing. I, I'm just not really a massive fan of it. Like it's the whole Toy Story, but with anime waifus vibe. But I'm gonna be honest, after playing through this for a couple of hours, <laughs> It's, it's actually growing on me. I actually, I'm actually starting to really like this game. Again, there are certainly a few different things that are holding me back. Like I saw the VIP button, I clicked into it last time, and it turned out that there were like 20 levels of VIP, which I get. Like some people, some people just prioritize making money. Let's put it that way. And some companies just love rewarding the big spenders. I really can't say much to that. However, me personally, I do have a preference and that is a preference for no VIP systems. So that's already like a big cross in my book. On the other hand though, it does kind of feel like they are bombarding us with gems, which is a really nice thing. So the jemmies are up here, 5K. You know what? Maybe let's go, let's go do some rolls, you know? So rolls is fully blind box so this guy over here the beginner's choice again if you're able to clear up to 324 you can do the whole 20 times 10 times re-roll so that's how they got that 200 figure from so yeah unfortunately if i click this one over here i need this uh premium plan thing and i just don't have it yet i think it's kind of smart from like a company point of view to actually lock it behind like quite a significant amount of gameplay however of course from like a re-roll point of view this obviously really sucks for everyone else all right let's keep moving through in stock so let's Let's hit some rolls. We got. Uh, we can do one temple. Let's let's do that. Let's do a temple and let's see where we go. Uh, yeah. Hey, a purple. Oh, only a purple. Okay. I'll introduce you guys to the rates. So let me do a quick skip, and it looks like we got a whole bunch of dupes. Wow, is that lucky or unlucky? All right, let me confirm the results, and then I'll show you guys the rates. So it's actually not too bad. The highest rarity seems to be 4.22%, and as you guys saw from my box, I was actually able to pull quite a significant amount of ultras. I think I pulled like three or so in the last 30 pulls. However, that is definitely like a very lucky position. Three out of 30, that is like 10%, and that is, yeah. That's just not what's going on here. On the other hand though, the good thing about this one compared to a lot of the other games I believe that are kind of in this realm, let's put it that way, it's that in these boxes, they typically drop shards, which is not in this game. Yes, there are most certainly shards, but like when you actually get a drop, you get the full figure as you just saw. And so just speaking of the shards, let me go over to the figurines. Uh, I'm gonna click in, let's go cafe. And so yeah, as you can see, this is kind of the progression system. And this is something that I do want to praise as well, because it's all really straightforward forward, right? You just spam upgrade until you can't anymore because you run out of currency. And then on the other hand, you go to design letter, which are your skills. And if you are missing any of these materials, there are actually a few different things going on. So sweep available. If I click that, I can actually go ahead and sweep it. So not that one over there, but at least this one here. So as you can see, there is this currency. I don't know what it's called, but I can use that to sweep. And so for you guys who don't know what sweep is, sweep is essentially skipping the entire stage to get the rewards instantly. So they're obviously in this game are not any like sweep tickets tickets or like any skip tickets, but there are like limits to the amount that you can sweep. But truth be told, like unless you're somehow able to buy this currency, you're not going to be hitting those limits. So it's essentially infinite. So again, for me personally, sweep is massive in my book. It just really saves time, especially in an idle game. Like it'd be really freaking weird if you had to spend a lot of time grinding for it, right? So actually there was something else I wanted to show you guys, which was this guy over here. And so this is just kind of like your equipment. And oh my God, I just really want to say like all these, I'm sorry, I don't speak this language language, but I'm pretty sure that's Indo, I think. But it's like incredibly, incredibly distracting. You can probably turn it off somewhere, but yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, so let's take a quick break to talk about our sponsor, LD Player. LD Player is a modern lightweight emulator that boasts incredible performance for all of your mobile gaming and app needs. It's got features like multi-instancing, you got high frame rate mode at 120 FPS, sync operations, there's one click route, as well as a lot of different keyboard mappings and more. Me personally, I definitely use LD Player for my daily driver for Revived Witch. And in my opinion, for Punishing Grey Raven, I do think that it is the best emulator. And so if you would like to try out figure fantasy or LD player then head on down to the description below or the pinned comment and go ahead and click the link. Thanks again to LD player for the sponsorship and with that being said let's get on with the video. Anyway moving on let's come out of there and let me show you guys uh, the otaku zone so 
Uh, it's, it's exactly what it sounds like, to be honest. But in a nutshell, this is kind of like your base system, right? Where you can actually display your figures. So if I click uh, this one over here, arrange. As you guys can see, I had put up shelves and I put up an alarm clock as well as a couple of figures over here. That really is it for this base system kind of thing. I, I think it's quite neat because it, they've really, really simulated this whole figure collecting kind of hobby. Again, I'm a pretty like moderate fan of figures. Like I won't go like ultra ultra deep but I will get one once in a while and so I can definitely relate to this however this just makes me really really feel like a weeb like holy moly <laughs> all right and so again this is kind of like your base system we've got the comfy over here objective 20 and so as you can see we are going to be getting shards and so yeah shards definitely do exist however uh illusion connect i feel like these are the ones that are very similar to illusion connect and so as you can see over here i have 72 of these purple shards i can actually go ahead and combine them and get a random unit so it looks like we got one of the starting characters which is it's cool it's cool but otherwise as you can see over here we are actually able to get some ultra figures as well so that is actually quite nice and so just back on the duplicate system or the shard system, I'm going to go over here. So we are in the figurine list. And what you'll notice is that there is an exclamation mark over here for promote. So yes, there is a dupe system. Let's have a look at what exactly happens. So if I click next, it looks like we are going to be getting some like base stat increases for attack and health. It's quite nice, I guess. Unfortunately, I've just not played long enough to know whether these stats are significant or not. Because guys, this is a second impressions. Oh, hold up. What's going on here? It looks like I can sell these two for my main character all right you know what let's freaking go ah oh dear okay i see it looks like we can unbind or uh, uncap the level cap all right well i guess that solves that mystery so yeah oh wow okay she also gets promoted to an ultra unit as well that's pretty cool it's also worrying but it's kind of cool right <laughs> all right so with all of that out of the way let me just show you a couple of the different game modes because again there is just so much going on so along the bottom as you can see a sacred tour the big three and blah 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 i've unfortunately only unlocked final battle as well as brawl club sacred tour is kind of like uh one of those resource farming stages so if i click into one five as you can see a sweet reward this is like one of those things that we could sweep from before and so in regards to this one there isn't really much to talk about it's like we go in we are given like a preset amount of dolls as well as a configuration so i can extend this guy and you'll see i have two different dolls and i just need to kind of it's kind of like a puzzle actually that's probably the best way to put it so again using the figures provided i have to achieve these objectives over here and then these guys will determine whether i get a one two or three stars so these guys here however what is nice about this system is that you don't technically have to three star a stage to be able to sweep it so i know that there are typically a lot of frustrations around this all right moving through uh uh, we've got this guy over here final battle so <laughs> it's actually made me really mad it's it, yeah i know i've only been playing a few hours but like i just got freaking stomped so let's just go right in i don't know if it costs anything i don't think it does but in a nutshell this is like your boss battle so let me run it let's see what happens and yeah, I'm probably going to get wrecked again. Like, as you can see, all of my dolls are taking significant amount of damage. I think the enemies were all level 45. There, there wasn't really a great chance that I was able to finish this. Actually, whilst we're here, as you can see, we do have the two time speed as well as an auto mode. So that is why everything is kind of just going off on its own. So that is quite nice. But like, I just got my ass handed to me. So let's just keep going. All right. So again, these are just your boss battles. So this guy over here, I'm pretty sure we fight just the dragon dude himself and if you guys can't tell already i get my ass handed to me by this guy all right let's pop out of this one and back again until we can see okay so that's the next thing i want to talk about uh almost so i'm gonna go ahead and come over to brawl club and yeah this is another game mode so so in a nutshell this is kind of like your arena right so here i'm gonna be able to set my defensive lineup so i'm just gonna like drag a couple over here i've got a defender here attacker over here got a healer here another support here and then a back line over here something like that and then i'm going to save and close and then from here i'm able to go out and battle so i can go and go find somebody let's let's actually you know what let's let's just do it so as you can see it is a five versus five they are looking a little bit under level actually it's just my tank that's like really really highly leveled so again it is going to be a lot of the auto battle can't actually whoa we can we can actually manual mode this okay okay oh oh dear okay that's that's really cool because it means that 
you are able to have some skill actually play out here, right? Because in a lot of other games, like you just unfortunately don't have direct control over this. So like, for example, Princess Connect, uh, Blue Archive, they just auto. It just completely autos and a lot of the time you just get screwed over, right? And it doesn't feel like really skillful. In the case of this game, Figure Fantasy, as well as like say Revive Witch, we actually are able to manual. So it does feel like we're using some level of skill when we do beat somebody. And so that's pretty sick. I was able to auto the win, but I do feel like I was overstatting them. So 7991 BP, so BP is battle power. And I unfortunately was curb stomping a 6763 battle power Snow of Sadness. This is probably his name. And so yeah, that's the arena system in a nutshell. Works very, very similarly to a lot of the other arenas. And oh my god, man, these things just don't stop. Only 2022 new code. Nah, that's BS, man. That's freaking BS. I don't know, somebody try that code, horny 2022. I, I doubt it's gonna work. All right, so aside from these guys down here, which are kind of like your mainstay modes, there are also events up here. So for example, ear, I'm not gonna even try ear, ear, ear. Look, she's cute. She looks like a little red riding hood kind of vibe. So let's go over to her event, which is, um, I think it's this one, dragon treasure. Nope, it's not. Okay, let's try another one. It is none of these. It is this guy up here. It is the adventure. So as you can see, they do have an event going on. And so I can actually go ahead and go into the trials. This is a boss battle. I got my ass handed to me for this one. But the cool thing about this one, I believe, is that it is also another puzzle-like one. Because as you can see, we have the objectives over here. I believe this old mate is Alfred. And then if I open up that, you'll notice that all of the characters are 160. So yeah, there is something about this. There is something puzzly about this. You can solve it. And honestly, like I really like that because there are a lot of games Games which I expected to have puzzles but like don't. So Alchemy Stars is certainly like the game that I had in mind where I thought it'd be a little more puzzly. Where we would have like the preset units and stuff but like I digress. Anyway like look at that, look at the visuals. Yes it is plasticky, yes it is kind of like Toy Story but waifus and I don't like Toy Story. But really the production value in this game is actually quite high. So if I just click into this one, th there is there is a lot of story. There is an insane amount of story. And like, look at this, it's pretty cool. It's a lot of like hybrid kind of storytelling where you've got the dolls in the background, like the figurines themselves. But on top of that, you've got the splash art up here as well. So it definitely does alternate between the two. Sometimes you definitely do get the movement like in the background. So for example, stuff like this, right? Where we're actually watching the 3D models go around and do things. I think it's pretty cool. So I think having a massive amount of story is a good and a bad thing, right? Because I unfortunately have found a a lot of uh, translations or like error codes or like fields that like really needed to be populated. For example, if this had like brackets like skill active one or something like that, I've found a couple of those. I just think that they had a lot to translate and unfortunately uh, were probably overwhelmed by it. But otherwise, that's kind of like my second impressions of this. I, I, I am slowly liking this game more and more but there are like, there are 100% deal breakers for me, unfortunately. First of all, like I said, it's the VIP systems. I preference games that don't have the VIP systems for sure. And if it was kind of like a purely PVE game, then I kind of get it. But then you've got like the arenas and I can certainly see how it can just all really snowball, right? Then on the other hand, as I showed you guys before, we had the dupe system. So if I click in over here, promote, I'm not really a massive fan of this or these kinds of systems. Like having to, ooh, Happy 2022 treasure, figure lucky 2022. It looks like that's all of the codes that might be available right now. So let me go try them after this. Maybe this feature actually is good for something. Anyway, back to this guy over here. Yeah, I I don't like the fact that you have to actually get dupes to be able to get them to their max potential. However, on the flip side, I am a pretty big fan of like the gameplay itself, I think it's just because it's my first venture into an idle game. I really like the fact that we are getting resources, that stuff is farming in the background according to how far we've cleared. However, this may be more like praise for the idle game genre rather than figure fantasy itself. And so just back to like figure fantasy itself, like the gameplay, uh, I don't know. I just actually feel like it's quite engaging. Again, I am a massive tactics fan. So like something like this may be working better. It's buffing four instead of just buffing two. I really 
like games with like these positioning kind of attributes, these kind of factors. And so that's why I would rate this whole battle system quite highly. But that is honestly a really massive like personal preference. There are people who like Arknights and there are people who hate Arknights. There are people who love AS like Alchemy Stars and hate it as well. Then there's going to be people who hate Genshin or love Genshin. It's just, yeah, it's personal preference. Uh, this is right up my alley. But other than that, that's kind of it for like my second impressions of this game. Again, I did not think that I would be playing this again. But to be honest, like I went in knowing a lot of these things like the VIP system, a lot of things that I didn't like. And so I just really tried to focus on like the things that I did like. And you know, I had a good time at least. I can't say that I will be picking this game up full time, but if you guys do pick it up, like I can't blame you. Like, look at that. Look at that. That's... Honestly, it's pretty cool. And so with all of that being said, welcome to the launch of Figure Fantasy. And if you guys do end up picking up this game, I hope you guys have fun. And so that is the secret question of the day. Are you guys going to be picking up this game? Are you guys going to be trying it out at all? Or other systems like the VIP systems or the dupe systems or even the idol system, like maybe it's a bit too boring for you? Are some of these systems kind of making you feel like, eh, I'll pass on this one? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know down in the comments below. And I would really appreciate that because it means you've watched up until the end of the video. And so thank you guys so much. But otherwise, if you did like this video, please consider a like. And if you would like to see more, then please consider a subscribe. But as our old friend Yuki won, once said all good things must come to an end and so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video bye bye